Welcome to my disaster of a reptile room slash office. I, I'm trying to make some changes this summer. So as you can see, I'm utilizing this space very poorly. I don't like where this cabinet is. My snakes are kind of a mess. And uh, just in, in general, I'm really not, I, I don't like the way this room is set up. So that is part of my goal this summer is to put all these reptiles onto one wall. I'm not getting any additional reptiles. I don't want any more right now, but I do want to utilize this space better so I can have more room to just to work and to have more space for the office and things like that. Uh, but today the project is I'm actually going to be making some changes to these enclosures. So that's why this place is a disaster. And that's why this animal's in a tub. He's just in this holding tub for now because I'm working on his enclosure. So if you guys remember how these enclosures, I did these enclosures last summer. I turned these cabinets into snake enclosures. So now we're going to be expanding those into this shelving area back here. I'm going to be adding that as part of their enclosure. So excuse the mess. You can see I've already finished, pretty much finished this one. So this is the first enclosure that I've almost finished by now. So you can see in this area here, that was the storage area at the end of the cabinet that I wasn't using for space. And essentially what I've done, I've drilled a hole right through and I've added this little tunnel. So I didn't want to pull this wall out because I think it was just going to be too much work slash it does provide some support to the in enclosure. But I thought that would be kind of an easy way slash kind of a neat way to add some additional space for them. And I've also added these shelves. So this just gives them some more space uh, to roam around and some more hangouts. So this one's almost finished. I'm gonna show you guys how I did it while I do the next one. And this one I'm just sort of adding up the, trying to figure out a way to get these wood, uh, the wood structures back into the enclosure so they fit nicely. So if you wanna see how I take this enclosure and added the additional space like I did the one out there, uh, definitely stick around and watch this video. And if you wanna see how I organize this absolute disaster of a room, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'm gonna be organizing this uh, in the future. Okay, so we're gonna to get to work here. I have my essentials. I have my Starbucks Americano. This is the blonde espresso, which is way better than the regular espresso. If you, don't, if you disagree with me, we're, I think we may have some kind of problem here. Uh, and I have my shirt, my Animals at Home shirt. You guys know what this means. Every five, $5 for every shirt gets donated to the Amazon Rainforest Conservancy. It's a great charity protecting the Amazon, protecting the wild counterparts of the, animal that I have in, the animals that I have in this room. Uh, Please watch the video on my homepage, which is, I don't think you should keep reptiles as pets if you have any more questions about that. All right, let's get to it. So before I get into actually working on the second enclosure, I wanna finish off adding these wood pieces into the enclosure that I already had finished. One of the things I've always wanted to do was actually fasten the wood into the enclosure just so it was a little bit more stable because when the snakes are moving around, they often, especially boa constrictors as they get bigger, they tend to move their decor around in their enclosure. And what I don't want is for them to knock over a piece of wood and hit the glass, because the glass is tempered, so if it does hit a hard enough strike, uh, it will shatter. So I wanna have the wood structures actually fixed into the, into the enclosure somehow, but when you do that, it's a real pain to clean around them. So you don't wanna have something that's completely fixed that you can't pull out. So I came up with this idea to have them so they're just uh, attached with a wing nut. So the wing nut will allow me to basically bolt them onto the, in the walls of the enclosure but then also remove them if I need to uh, when cleaning. So I went to Home Depot and found some hanging, these are just called hanging bolts, essentially a screw thread with a bolt thread on one end and I used this method that I found online to be able to, to use two wing nuts to screw them into the end of the wood. So then I drilled a hole into the enclosure and with a wing nut and a washer I was able to thread the sticks into place or the wood into place and now they can be easily removed but while they're in the enclosure they're basically completely fixed. First we gotta pull her out and she is very hungry right now so she's really not going to like this but we're gonna pull her out anyway obviously we can't keep her in there while we're working on the enclosure so if you've ever if you've seen my hook training video you know how, the, how I grab my animals to avoid getting bit because like I said she is ready to strike she's actually struck at the glass in the last day or so 
so I know she's hungry. So I'm just gonna be putting her in a tub. So she's gonna spend some time in this little tiny tub. I hate putting her in this tub. This was her original quarantine tub when I first got her when she was a lot younger. She's gonna spend a few hours in this tub and then I have a much larger tub that I'm gonna put her in once my other snake is out of it. This is way too small of a tub to have a boa in, but this is only for a few hours and it'll work for now. Okay, so I'm trying this slightly different than I did last time I did this project. And I, am, I slid the thing halfway out onto my balcony, hoping to cut down on some dust in my living room. So this is gonna be kind of an awkward shot, but I'm just gonna do it this way. And I'm really not gonna go into very much detail here because I did this exact project on my other DIY snake cage. So if you're confused by something here that I do too quickly, make sure you go check that video. absolute worst part about this build because I'm lacking tools. So on the first enclosure that I showed you, I, I showed that it was a tunnel leading from the main part of the enclosure into this additional smaller piece of the enclosure. So I had to go buy, this is actually for a guinea pig. I don't really like it that much, but it was cheaper than a $40 piece of coke or a cork round, which I was not gonna pay for. This was like nine bucks from PetSmart. Uh, it'll work for now, I'm, I'm sure I'll change it. But this is gonna be the tunnel leading from the main enclosure into the small enclosure, which means I need to drill a hole in the side wall that's gonna fit this. Now, I don't have a saw, like I don't have a power saw, so I kinda have to do this by drilling and it takes a long time and takes a lot of effort, but I guess it'll be worth it in the end. So if you are a little bit confused about what this is gonna look like for now, it will make sense in the end. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw an outline uh, of this so I know what to cut. I know the orientation is gonna be kinda confusing, but this is the back of the enclosure this is the bottom of the enclosure. So I'm gonna drill a hole right here. So I've gotta use this, it's gonna sit something along like this. So you can see I have a half circle there to outline where this needs to be drilled. I guess my camera card filled up while I was filming this last piece. So anyway, I'm just adding the hardboard backing onto the back end of the enclosure. So if you really want more detail about that, you can check out the very first video I did on this DIY snake cage part one. So now that the back is on, you can see the, the, the enclosure does have a back now and the, silic, the seams are fully silicone. So I use just regular GE1 or just 100% silicone to seal the seams. And then I added the vinyl flooring just like I did in the very first video. I siliconed that down and then siliconed the seams around the vinyl flooring to make sure everything was completely sealed. So next up is adding the oak runner board on the bottom of the enclosure. So this does two things. One, it's gonna hold the substrate in from falling out. And two, it's a place for the plastic tracks for the glass doors to sit on top of. And I've used this product before in some other videos and I cannot say enough about it. This is No More Nails by LePage. This stuff is incredibly strong. I have never had it, an issue with it. I've used it for all sorts of things just like this. It has almost no smell to it and it dries very quickly, where I, I shouldn't say it dries quickly, it grabs quickly. As soon as you place the item onto the glue itself, it sticks, but you have about a 15 minute wig wiggle room where you can move the item around without, the, without it impacting the way it adheres to the surface. 
So I ran a bead of that on the top of, or I guess the bottom of the oak runner board. And then I also ran a bead of silicone on the inside of the enclosure. So I also used the No More Nails to attach the plastic tracks for the glass. And this is a good example of how quickly this product sticks. I can stick it right onto the roof of the enclosure and it holds, but then it also allows me to move it around until it's in the right spot. Obviously this being for the glass doors, it has to be in a precise spot. So since I had these enclosures out and upside down, I figured I might as well change the heat on the warm side of the enclosure. So previously I only had a small Exoterra heat pad, but I figure since I am extending the length of the enclosure, I do have a larger area to work with in terms of a temperature gradient. So I might as well add a larger piece of heat tape just so there's a little bit more heat on this warm side of the enclosure. Okay, so the vinyl flooring has been installed as well as the oak runner board and the glass tracks. So now you guys can kind of see what I meant by this tunnel. Now everything is put in place. So you can see this is a tunnel leading into the other side of the enclosure onto this side. So simple as that, it'll be an easy way for them to go from one side to the other. So the last thing to do with this enclosure is to add the shelves. So I have three different shelves. I just used these small shelving brackets and I had half inch screws and I had to use, I found these sort of concave washers that I turned upside down and that was the method that I used to make sure the screws weren't poking through the other end of the shelf. So just screwed all the, the brackets on and then I used books and yoga blocks to hold the shelf up while I screwed them into place. I used quarter inch plywood, they're just it's birch plywood. And in hindsight I definitely regret using quarter inch plywood. Uh, I, I used it because I wanted to cheap out and I knew that it was get, definitely going to be strong enough but it was such a pain finding anything that I could screw into a quarter inch sheet of plywood without it poking through the other side. So if I were to do it again, I'd definitely go some with something slightly thicker. I just stained it with a Minwax stain and then sealed it with a water-based polyurethane. Now if you watched my Brazilian Rainbow Boa enclosure build, I used an oil-based polyurethane and Despite I think that being a better product in terms of being able to seal the wood, it just took way too long to cure. It took like six or eight weeks for me to be able to stop smelling the fumes. So the water-based is definitely a little bit easier to use because it, it still takes maybe two weeks to be fully cured or even longer, but it's definitely not over a month. I also used silicone afterwards and I sealed the edges of uh, around each shelf. Now this was more for two reasons. One, if they defecate or pee on the top of the shelves, it's not going to seep in behind the shelf. But two, also the silicone does provide more structural integrity to the shelf. So having a, a perimeter of silicone definitely helped. On the shelf that I have underneath my radiant heat panel, I added a, um, a ceramic tile. Now this is a ceramic tile that I had. I had two ceramic tiles kicking around from a project that I was going to do a long time ago and I thought now I would use them. And essentially I siliconed it down to the shelf and this is just going to allow for a little bit of a heat sink on that shelf. So the wood would still absorb the heat from the radiant heat panel but the ceramic just does a better job at holding the heat and releasing the heat slowly when the radiant heat panels turn off at night. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, so the cabinets have been moved back into the room and I have this giant rat's nest of cables and cords. I am very excited to organize this and I'm gonna put this in its own little area. Once I get the shelf, the shelving unit that I'm gonna be putting on this wall, that's gonna hold all of my reptiles. So I'm not gonna organize the, these cables today because that shelf is coming in next week. Okay, so I finally wrestled both the enclosures back into the reptile room, which is not an easy task because I have a fairly small apartment, so it's kind of a lot of 30 point turns to get these things back in here. But they're back in, they're pretty much completely finished. There's a few small details that I need to finish, like some handles on the glass doors on that side, but nothing major. Um, I'm gonna make some of you very mad here because I'm not adding the animals in this video. I know that's definitely what you wanna see. You wanna see them explore their new, new uh, enclosures. I'm not gonna do that in this video for a couple reasons. One, I have the shelving unit coming in this week and I, I want to wait so I can add this to the units before I add the snakes into here. It'll just be a little bit easier for me. But really the main reason I don't want to add them in yet is I'm just, I want to let this polyurethane on the, on the shelves cure a little bit longer. I can't smell it just by putting my nose up against the shelves, but I know that it can take quite a while for this, uh, even water-based polyurethane to cure. It can sometimes take, you know, seven or eight days or even longer. So I just want to make sure that that's completely cured before I put the animals back in. There's no kind of no rush putting them back in. I know that they're not, they don't love being in those tubs, but uh, they'll survive for now because they're going to go into this awesome enclosure very, very shortly. So I took the glass out of this enclosure so we don't get a reflection so you can see it a little bit better. But you can see it's, it's very similar to the original enclosure that I had, but of course I added the shelves and the, the climbing branches. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. I think the uh, snakes are really gonna like it. So if you're not familiar with what these originally looked like, make sure you go watch the DIY snake cage video and you'll see what the original one was. Now we have this additional cubby here and first thing you might notice is that there is no light in that secondary enclosure, the secondary piece to their enclosure. And I'm actually gonna leave it that way. So. Aesthetically, it might not look great having the main enclosure illuminated during the day and then this little piece uh, dark. Although I do get a lot of diffused light during the day, so it won't be completely dark like it is now. But the reason I'm gonna leave it dark is because I think that that will give them a little bit more of a natural environment. You know, you have to imagine that in the wild, these animals would easily be able to get out of the sunlight if they wanted to, but maybe burrowing or going underneath a tree or some rocks or whatever it is and this will allow them to get out of the light. I mean, even though they, go, they can go into their hides, they don't have any hides in here right now, but typically they can go in their hides and they're kind of out of the light, but this allows them to get completely out of the light if they want. So they have, in this enclosure, he has a shelf he can go on here, and then he even has a higher shelf up here that it's very dark, you can hardly see up there, and that's gonna be another, basically a hide. He, he can go up there, he can curl up during the day, and it's gonna be nice and dark. It's a pretty tight squeeze, so it'll be almost like a hide for him. And this enclosure is very similar. Of course, the branches are a little bit different. And then I only have one shelf in this enclosure, but it's nice and high as well. So if you're eager to see all of these enclosures all stacked up onto a nice shelving unit, and you wanna see the animals get put into these enclosures as well as uh, some decor, I wanna add some fake leaves into here as well, obviously substrate, and I'm gonna add the animals. If you want to see that, and if you're excited to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it.